Hello. Hi guys, um, today I'm going to be talking about um, breeding tropical fish, as you can see, um, and also what you should feed them. Uh, this is all from the fish series. We've got about probably about five or six videos. As you can see, I've got, well, you can't really see it, it's not that clear, but I've got two guppies here. You might be able to see them moving a little bit. Uh, I've got um, two Danios. One of my Danios died today because he got taken into the filter and got cut in half, which was disgusting, um, and had to deal with that. And I've got Silver Shark, which is behind my filter, and two Platys, which are, are in the woods, which I would like to call them the woods. The one's not in the woods, one's in the woods. One's in the woods and one's outside the woods. So um, breed, when they're breeding fish, you're going to want to have them in a, a medium temperature range. So if you look at their sort of temperature range, um, you'll get a good idea of, of what sort of area I guess you should have them in. Um, I find uh, about 24, 25 as a, as a real good temperature for them. Uh, I used to do 26, but I didn't get the best of um, results there. So let's go on to feeding. Um, if you have larger fish, um, you can use pellets because they they don't tend to pollute the water so much. Um, pellets are always a good f for good food for um, not polluting the water. Um, flake food. Sorry about the pink cup. It's a bit gay, I know, but so yeah. I mean, flake food can be great. Um, in a way that the sort of flakes, it's it gives a better food for all varieties of fish, and they all tend to eat it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really good to have tropical fish and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you've got bigger fish, I'd suggest you pellets because they won't pollute the water. Um, and also, you want to provide a varied of meat food. I mean, always get. I mean, I've got a book here, but I mean, I've always oh, no, it's awful heart. You know, lots of different foods: brine shrimp pellet foods, wafers for bottom feeding fish like Corydoras, catfish, plecos, sailfin plecos, all that lot. Um, and also, um, what, what are they? Oh yeah, tube effects, yeah. Um, yeah, but brine shrimp are really good. I mean, they, they are sort of the, the bit. And then you can also you can feed the fry them and they, they tend to really like them. Um, so yeah, when you're breeding them, what you're going to want to do you get obviously a male and a female, but normally with live bearers, you're going to want, want to get two females to every sort of one male, or three females to want every one male. Otherwise, they'll tend to, you know, keep on annoying her, and she'll get a bit annoyed. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, the aquarium's nicely set up for it. You know, you've got my silver shark wants quite a bit of swimming space, so there's a lot of swimming space. As you can see, there's quite a bit of swimming space. I'll move my cup out there. So yeah, there's lots of different swimming space, especially in this area. You've got the, the truck over there, which is a nice little addition. It's got a few holes in it for the fry to go in. The platys can still get in there, and the other fish can get into there, but they, they tend not to worry about it. Um, you've got the woods there. The platys do go in there, and especially the silver shark, he likes getting all the bits off the leaves. But that's also a good little hiding place for the fry. And these two plants are really, really... They give a little place for fry if they wanted to, but they're really just for looking at. Um... So anyway, uh, sorry, I'm a bit thirsty today, actually. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, really what you want to do is provide bits of cover. But if you've got sort of angel fish, obviously angel fish want densely planted stuff. Um, so it's tricky when you've got a silver shark, which wants lots of room. But when you buy a silver shark, bear in mind that they can grow up to 30 centimetres in length. So they're, they're rather um, big fish. And I mean, when I mean, my one's about that small at the moment, a medium size when you're in a pet store. You know, or they're quite small ones. You know, some are really big, but I'm talking about the small baby silver shark. In two years' time, they can go up to 30 centimeters, um, which is quite long, um, and they go quite fat. If you've ever seen a roach or a rud or something, they go sort of like that, but just a bit longer. They're nice when they're big, but you need a big tank. I suggest um, around about um, about 180 liters plus, maybe 200 plus would be better. This is a 180 litre, so if it does get too big, I'll be giving it to my friend, which has a 210. Um, so that would be fun. Uh, I'm sure he'll pay me quite a bit for him, because he's, he's into silver shark, and uh, especially species fish as well. Um, also, you can also mix the silver shark with um, Oscar fish as well. Oscar fish, even though they're predatory fish, uh, when the silver shark are large enough, sort of maybe 10, cent 10 centimetres plus, you can add them with the Oscars, but I would research it first. I mean, I know, but I just don't want to be taking the blame. So just research that first. But I'd, I'd have seen quite a few silver shark with Oscars. So, yeah, I mean, what you want to do is also is get a breeding net um, and pop it in the corner and then just have a nice little net 
which you can use um, to, clack, to catch the fry. Um, also, a lot of people have asked me lately about about fry problems because if you have 80 of them and you've got like a real densely planted uh, aquarium and and you know the fry have just they're in the you know the fry have got a field day and uh, you know they've got a real big field day and they've just densely planted they're not going to get eaten anywhere and that's not always the best thing um, because you know, you're going to have 80 to about 100 fry alive and they're going to get big as well and 80 fish is quite a lot of fish to care for and the ammonia you might have to spike and they might all die so you don't really want that so what you want to do is don't plant if anything plant it densely in one half and the other half just but I would rather sparsely um, do do the planting like mine mine's a perfect setup for, for fish um, obviously I, I run my own business called Tropics uh, it's in Croydon but um, it's a very small business it's not quite off the ground yet but it, it's it's getting there definitely um, but yeah just you know do your research about the fish and if they sort of I mean sawtails they can have up to sort of 50 fry and they don't tend to eat their f um, fry often they do but they don't eat as you know as harsh amount as the guppies I mean the guppies will probably eat 70 75% of their fry Maybe even eighty percent. So what you want to do is get get the ones get the fry which you want in a net and pop them in the breeding net. And as cool as it does sound, leave the rest to be eaten because you know I think that's the best way you're going to get. And also, if you look at a book, normal fish books, they'll always say about um, the fry being um, being able to um, about if you look in a book, sorry, they'll, they'll be like live. Say they most fish will eat live foods and small live foods. Uh, even guppies will eat live food, and obviously they eat their cannibals, so they will eat their babies. And they're that, they're so tiny. I mean, I hardly see them when they're actually born. But um, on guppies, if you're there's little, there'll be a little black spot at the back as well. So yeah, that's that's what you want to look out for if you've got um, a breeding breeding lot. Um, platies, if you want to identify them, they're um, the male has this like a the the bottom anal fin. It's like um. Mm, no, he's going to stay behind the filter. I'm not going to give you a demonstration of him. But they've got like this sort of... Oh, I'll try and... Uh, that sort of shapes. So just that with that, that little bit of there. Um, that sort of shapes. Um, fins. The females have got more like that. Or more more flat like that, really. Sort of coming out like like that. I like that, really. But yeah, but the... So they're quite, like, they're quite sharp and pointed. The males, the anal fins, but they're they're nice and broad, sort of like a upper curve or a little, like hard, like like. Um, I can't find find a thing kind of example. Um, let's look at this. There'll be it'll be like that much, like sort of no, it'll be like that. Their fin will be like that, but like, oh, this is annoying. It'll just be like that much of the box there with the F and upwards, F and upwards, just in that little corner bit there. That'll be like their fin. Um, it's like a little square, really. So that's to identify them. But again, they're live bearers. You're going to want to have two to one, two females to every one male. I find that quite a good ratio. They breed quite often. So yeah, the fry you do want, put in a breeding net, and the rest you don't, and leave them to eat. Um, thanks for watching my videos. Uh, this is Tropics. This is Hulords, and, um, uh, and it's live at Tropics. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and please rate, comment, and subscribe.